Hi, this is Mike Serrano with Orb TV, and we're here at Mobile World Congress. And today we're joined by Ray Lamastre from Light Reading. Welcome, Ray. Thank you, Mike, for having me. Great to have you here. So you've been in the mobile industry, covering the mobile industry for about 20 years now. Yeah. Uh, this marks how many Mobile World Congresses for you? This is number 16. 16, Yeah, wow. I was attending the, the event in Cannes when people were getting excited about getting two megabits downstream uh, over 3G. <laughs> uh, so a little bit different to, to what we're hearing about here at, uh, in 2018. So what are, what, what's the buzz out there? In so the buzz, I mean, there's an awful lot of buzz around 5G, obviously, a lot of excitement there now that there are some standards and uh, an evolution of IoT, for example. Um, so uh, an, an awful lot of handsets. So a lot of the buzz is around still the hardware, the technology, uh, the radio access network, the IoT modules. Um, in building and, and out building uh, infrastructure and physical devices. Um, but what I think actually is most important in 2018 is what underpins all of that infrastructure and supports it because none of you can build the best 5G network in the world and you will be able to make no money out of it if you do not have the supporting uh, analytics, telemetry, and compute resources to back up what you're trying to do. So th that's interesting. A lot of the, that those analytics require data yeah. uh, and, and visibility into the network. Absolutely. Is, are, are, are operators concerned about that? Are they making plans to, to ensure they have that visibility? Absolutely. Um, I think you know there's you have the buzz at this show, but if you talk to uh, a CTO or a CIO um, from an operator, and even going back a couple of years, I remember speaking to the CTO of Telefonica in 2015 and saying to him, you know, 5G plans, I'm sure, are on your table. What are you thinking about? And he said, right now I'm thinking about optical transport and analytics. The other stuff can come later. And that was then. And he's actually, Telefonica have invested in that and now they're in a really good place because they have their transport that can handle all of that data and they've been working hard on the analytics that can make sense of that data. Now they can move forward and start thinking about the radio access network and how that's going to evolve. Go ahead. Um, what's the status of, of artificial intelligence? So, yeah, an awful lot of buzz uh, around that. I think that's very, it's very early uh, doors there in terms of, of how operators might take uh, AI capabilities uh, and start to uh, implement them. I think the early stages we're seeing is in the customer experience side, so you have uh, the various bots that are handling uh, uh, customer uh, requests. Uh, but I think for the operators and certainly the, the, the kind of folks I talk to again from the CTO's office, um, their great interest is in the implementation of machine learning into their analytics and next-gen OSS systems so that they're able to automate the processes that are currently so manually intensive right now. I think that comes round, back round to why um, uh, telemetry, getting the information you need from the systems in your network, getting the ac and accurate information is absolutely vital here because there's a lot of inaccurate information still floating about in networks. Accurate information from all the sources you need it, being able to make sense, segment and make sense of that information and then being able to deploy it. Currently that would be making some decisions, setting up some policies, but ultimately the operators do want machine learning to learn the trends and be able to automate processes even down to uh, changing you know, the, the, the beam forming in their mobile network and for that to happen automatically and adjust to customer needs. So, so it sounds like these self-optimizing networks, software-defined networks, really are starting to become more a reality. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, a lot of a lot of talk, a lot of diagrams, um, you know, a, a lot of presentations. 
but now I think with the the the, the evolution of um, you know massive MIMO uh, beam forming and the kind of technologies that can be deployed in advanced 4G networks but will be deployed in 5G, these are now feeding back into the the plans and preparations of how that can be managed and how all of the information that needs to inform that infrastructure and all the information that comes back from it, how that can be handled effectively and efficiently. So is virtualization kind of being the serving as the driver for this? It's it's or one it of the, it's one of the drivers, but it's absolutely key. I think what we have in 5G is we have a puzzle and you have to have all of the pieces of the puzzle to make it all work. You need that big picture. So um, SDN and NFE are absolutely uh, critical parts of that puzzle, but so is edge computing, absolutely vitally important. Um, smart analytics, telemetry, um, that, that optical transport that might seem so boring to so many people is absolutely critical and that's all the way to the edge, which is why Telefonica, which I mentioned earlier, has invested so much in, in its fibre to the home infrastructure, or fibre all the way to the edge, because right. that will support the, the backhaul for 5G ultimately. Um, all of these pieces need to go together to enable automation in a in a 5G environment and that's the automation is absolutely critical is the is is IOT the concern that you're looking at so many devices coming online so many sensors that you really want to automate it or is automation going to happen independent of, of IOT uh, I think it well it'll happen uh, independent but it's it's going to be the impact of IoT and having an IoT strategy is going to require an, auto an awful lot of automated processes. I think you've got two volume challenges for the operators. You've got the volume of data and then you have the volume of connections. And of course some connections can only, might only be delivering a, a couple of bits an hour or a couple of bits a day. But they still need to be connected, that information needs to be made sense of. But there's going to be billions of them. That's right. So billions of devices. but. At the same time, you might have some of these IoT devices that are high definition security cameras, for example, that might be constantly streaming uh, video back to a centralized point. And then, of course, you're, you're eating up an awful lot of uh, capacity there. That's true. Um, how are the operators, or, or where are they at in their IoT strategies? Are they fairly sophisticated or is this still something that's fairly nascent? I think that uh, in terms of IoT strategies, you've still got two very distant points and you've got some companies that are focused or oh, you've got some operators that see it as an, an integrated part of, uh, of their 5G strategies, hence uh, investment in narrowband MBIOT, uh, you've got uh, CATM, you've got uh, unlicensed spectrum um, uh, IoT as well. Um, so it's an important part but I think what they all realize that it's very important what the the disparity is in, in terms of the strategy uh, comes down to the business. How are you going to make money? Because at, at the end of the day, they have to make money out of everything they do. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all very exciting, the capabilities, but how are you going to monetize it? So I think the, the, the business strategies of how to make money from IoT, that's where you get a, a, a lot of uh, different uh, views. I'm sure It'll come together and you'll get certain camps right. We're going to be the enabler for other companies. We're going to tie, same as we have with media at the moment. Some companies are investing a lot in their creating their own media and being media companies, BT for example. Others are stepping back and seeing we, we can be the platform and, and building partnerships. Yes. And I think we'll find the same with IoT. Yeah, now, IoT seems to be one of those terms that it encompasses everything. And if you try to do it all, you won't make any money. There's just, it's too broad, it's trying to like, it's like trying to boil the ocean. Yeah. You really have to segment the IoT space and pick those, those verticals that you are best suited for and go out, put together a strategy and go uh, after Absolutely. It. And I think what will be really interesting here is to watch the evolution of Amazon's IoT strategy and of course that's very linked to uh, edge computing as well because I mean IOT modules are essentially going to be part of that distributed cloud 
uh, and part of uh, the sort of um, the edge architecture. And if Amazon made a very big play into into the uh, edge and started building its own significant um, network edge uh, architecture to support its IoT plans, then the mo mobile operators actually might find themselves cut out of the that critical part of IoT, which is is the 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 physical presence of it. You know, street furniture, I expect, to be a terminology that's <laughs> going to come into greater use uh, this year and beyond. And owning that street furniture and having the rights to be able to uh, access and put whatever uh, modules you need out at the edge of the network, having that access is going to be absolutely critical. Interesting. So interesting times ahead. Never a dull moment, Mike, <laughs> especially here at Mobile World Congress, but there used to be times when uh, this industry was, uh, had its uh, little lull moments, you know, one in the summer, one at the end of the year, and it was a five-day working week. Those days are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely agree. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. I really appreciate no, you coming by. Great. Thanks, Mike. Take care.